Welcome back to the Strong Build uh, Workshop Facility. Um, tonight I'm going to run you through some of the uh, pre-assembly steps uh, in the uh, community perma permaculture system that we've, uh, we've been working on. Um, just before we, uh, it, we, we get going on that, I might just fill you in on a, a bit of uh, background of this project. Um, and, and I'll start even a bit before that. One of, the, one of the wonderful things about living in a small town like Barry is that there's a good community. Um, you know, people know who you are and, uh, you know, you go down and get the milk and it always takes you half an hour and all, that, all of those wonderful things like that. But one of the good things is when people need help, um, people reach out and give them a hand. So um, there's a, a voluntary uh, or a non-for-profit um, organisation just north of Berry uh, that's called um, a, Touch of a Touch of Paradise Farm. Now uh, this, um, this organisation is set up to give um, young people who are either handicapped or struggling at school, uh, it's, it's set up to give them some practical experience that can uh, either lead them into a, um, into a uh, um, into a career with some type of horticultural background or um, just gives them some life skills that will better equip them um, as they move forward. Um, so my wife Carolyn uh, was up um, doing some voluntary work up there a couple of months ago and, uh, and, and noticed that, um, that they didn't really have a, a veggie garden system going and, um, and together with a, a friend of hers, Shane, um, they decided they'd um, uh, raise some money and, um, and see if they could get together uh, a, a veggie garden system for, uh, for, the, for the Touch of Paradise farm. Now, uh, I suppose that's where I came into it. They, um, they approached me and said, look, we, we want to get this, um, this veggie garden thing going. Um, the initial thoughts was we would potentially build something like uh, the... the um, the systems that you've seen before, which are the, either the hexagonal or octagonal uh, system, you know, using the rotating chook tractor. But when I, um, when I thought about it a bit more, I thought, well, really, what we need for a community project is something probably a little bit larger and, uh, and something that's potentially expandable. Um, so we came up with a, with a concept that's based on a hexagon. Now, the beauty of a hexagon is a shape is that they interlock, think of a honeycomb, they, they interlock together and that concept can just expand as, as big as you like. So um, we worked on the hexagon because it's, it's an efficient shape um, and, and came up with, uh, with the, the, the system that we're going to be working on tonight. Now the other thing that um, we wanted to make sure with this is that it was easy to, easy to build. Now the, uh, the existing structures we've worked with before um, you know, they're a reasonably complicated project, so we wanted to really simplify this. So this has been designed with just two panels. There's a, a, a closed panel that's, that's full netting and a door panel. Um, and basically with putting those panels together in a, in a combination, um, you'll, you, you, can, uh, you can create a, these hexagonal cells that just keep expanding. Um, so that's a bit of background on it. Um, now, because this would often be done as a community project, um, I thought that the, the way to approach this would be, well, let's get a number of people involved in the construction of it. So uh, what I'm going to run you through tonight is um, some of the, the jigs and gadgets and, and ways that I would handle this if I was going to do this um, or, or, you know, you're going to take on a project like this and do it as a group. So. Um, so give me a couple of minutes, I'll get myself organised and, uh, and we'll come back and, uh, and have a look at that. Okay, so the aim of the exercise tonight is um, to firstly um, make each of the components and then uh, and look at how we could potentially jig them up. Now, a, a jig is a device that you use to, to basically uh, save marking out, etc, etc, and I'll talk you through these as we, uh, as we get on a bit further. Um, so really the aim of the exercise is tonight we're going we're to look at how we're going to make each of the components. Um, I'm not going to run you through the basic things like cutting things to length, I've already done that. Obviously that can be done with a circ saw or a drop saw, um, what, whatever you want to do, um, hand saw, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm not going to go through those simple things. 
the, the only other process apart from chopping things to length is uh, the external, um, external corners of the, of the wall panels have an angle ripped on them because three of these actually meet together in, uh, in, in an angle there and that can just be done with a circ saw or a table saw. Um, we, might, we might have a look at that in a little bit more detail when we, uh, when we set up and, and we get uh, a, a group of people in here um, having the first run of things. So um, what, what we're going to uh, have a look at and um, I, I might just take this uh, opportunity to apologise for um, our, our slackness of uh, producing the plans for the octagonal and, uh, and uh, hexagonal veggie patch to date. Um, re regrettably the drafting department's been a bit busy drawing houses so we haven't, we haven't finished the plans but we are getting there um, and what you see in my hand is actually a, a prototype um, booklet for the assembly of this community garden so um, we will get there one day uh, hopefully in the near future so uh, long term the plans for this community garden uh, the, the uh, hexagonal and the octagonal veggie patch will all be on the Strong Build website. Um, any proceeds that we make from that um, are going to go towards this community garden job as well. So, um, yeah, so if you, uh, when we get it set up, if you feel like buying a set of plans, um, you'll know that any profit from that's going uh, for, for a great cause. Um, so the, I think you can probably see there, the first thing we're going to work on is this, um, this, this wall panel. Again, like I said before, we've really simplified this. Uh, all we've got is two posts and two rails. Um, so we'll just have a bit of a look at how we're going to do the post. Um, so like I said before, this post being cut to length, um, I've got a, a jig over here. Now this is basically just a, a, a piece of timber on the top. There's a stop there so I can slide it down to the end of that post. Um, there's, there's really just um, two holes that I need to um, that I need to put in here, or two types of holes. There's two 10 millimetre holes through the top uh, and two 8 millimetre holes through the side. So um, I'm just going to um, drill them. So we'll do the 10 millimetre holes first. So they just come down. Now you can see that jig puts that hole in exactly the right spot. What I've done is just worked down and worked in so that I know that hole's in the right spot. Um, obviously the advantage is if you're working with a group of people and potentially if some of them aren't particularly skilled, this is one way that you can make sure you still produce a quality product um, without necessarily having um, you know, skilled labour to, uh, to do so. So I'm just going to quickly Drill the other 10 millimetre hole down here. So you can see that saves all the marking out. I'll just um, change those drill bits over and drill the 8 millimetre hole through the side. Okay, now I won't bore you with drilling the other one, but you can see there that's all the, all the marking out done for that post all in one hit. So everything's just been marked out on the jig, drilled reverse through and ready to go. And like I say, that's then child's play for anyone to, uh, to mark that post out. Um, now, the, um, so that's the, that's the post for the wall panel. While we've got that going, I'm just going to grab one of the posts for the... Um, for the door panel, which I've got here. Now, with this, we don't need the we don't need the 10 millimetre hole. We only need that eight. That we only need the um, the uh, eight millimetre hole, and we only need the bottom one. So I've got a little um, little packing block in here because in the way this goes together, there's a top rail comes through over the door post. I'm going to, um, I've got a little block that goes in the, in the jig and I'm just going to screw in there. You can see 
so people can get that in the right spot. I've put arrows on it so that lines up. We put the screw in the back and so now on this door post I now slide that down. This, that, that packer is where the top rail is going to go and then I can drill I can drill the hole through can drill the hole through for that um, to locate that bottom rail and that's really excuse me that's really all the uh, all the set out and all the holes done for for the two posts um, so I'll just sort a few things out here and we'll come back and have a look at the rails okay now the um, the, the rails are even more straightforward than the post um, but basically the for the um, for the uh, for the wall panels there's uh, a top and bottom rail they're both exactly the same and um, to just save a bit of marking out, what we're doing is we're just going to drill in the centre of, um, of the end of the rail, we're going to just drill a hole. So I've got a, uh, I've got a jig here, you can see there's a hole through there. If you look under this side, that's in the centre this way and the centre that way. And that just sits over, put the... Um, we're using for the assembly, we're using a 14, 14 gauge. Um, here in Australia we call them a, a bugle drive um, batten screw. Looks a bit like um, looks a bit like that. I don't know if you can see that. So he's got like a hex driver in the head, fairly chunky, galvanised so it doesn't rot. And we're just putting a um, a, a hole, a, a, a guiding hole up the end of the rail so that that batten screw can um, can go in there. So that's what this jig's for. So we just locate that, then I'll drop the jig out of the road. Just give it a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Um, then when you um, when you do the other end, flip the rail over. That way, if something is, if the rail's not exactly the the right size, you're going to be the same distance down from each um, each end. Same process again. So that's the um, that's the rails done. Now, if um, if this is a top rail uh, for a door panel, I've actually doubled up on this jig. I've got another eight millimetre hole there, which um, which we're going to put then a a batten screw down. I'll just pretend with this block. So if this was a, a door if this was a door panel, your door post goes in like that and we need another hole through there so I've doubled up with this jig and I've got a, a second hole there that we can drill through that so for the door top rail we'll do that and then for the little door bottom rails we just drill either end like we did for the top rail so really the beauty of this project is two jigs the one for the post with the little extra packing block and this quite simple one just to give the guidance hole in the end of the rail and, and a secondary hole for that door post um, and really with that so you know you can set up a group of people get a you know number of battery drills going and um, and you can really get a you know workstation um, kind of approach going on this and um, and, and that's what we'll do um, we're going to come back next week and uh, and, and have, a, have a go and see how, how many of these panels we can put together. Um, so that's really the, uh, the production of each of these components. I'll just finish off drilling a few holes and things and then I'll, um, I'll show you how I'd, uh, how I'd set this up to pre-assemble these, um, these panels. Alright, so we're about to uh, assemble the wall panel. Just before we do, um, if you just want to have a look down here, you can see this is a, another one of those uh, bugle head screws I was talking about before. They're going to go through our rail in that uh, nice hole that our jigs put perfectly in the right spot. You can see they're coming out in the right spot. Um, actually, just while we're, we're looking at that, 
when you're drilling the holes, always drill from the point of contact back the other way, if that makes sense. So in this case, the jig sat on this side and we drilled back this way. Now, as it works out, that came out almost dead centre, but if it comes out a bit crooked, it's better for it to be off centre on this side than off centre on the other side because this is the, the point that does the location. So um, just before we start screwing things together, I just wanted to show you here, that head's sitting a bit proud. So what I'd do, you could either, if you had a large countersink bit, you could counterbore that a bit, or we can just grab a chisel and knock a bit of, uh, knock a bit out like that, just so that when that head goes in, it's not going to get in the road of anything. Um, actually, while we're, while we're looking here too, I'll, I'll just um, go through the material we're using here again. Um, this is like a lot of our structures made out of recycled hardwood. Um, the, the one of the things with an organic farm, you can't use treated pine. Um, and we can't even use hardwood that's had any creosote on it. So you've got to be a little bit careful in this case because we're working with an organic farm that we're using untreated recycled hardwood. Um, yeah, so you know there are other, other products you can use um, and obviously if you're not working in an organic situation you could use treated pine or, or whatever. Um, so we're using uh, just recycled hardwood again. Most of this, well all of this material is um, 4x2 or 100 by um, 50 and it's all recycled um, either um, studs or uh, floor joists or, or, um, or roof rafters out of uh, out of old houses so um, you know it's great to be reusing this material. So anyway we've, um, we've set that, uh, set that um, batten screw up there so I'm going to come up the top here and going to screw the, um, the rail together here. So that batten screw goes in, I've already pre-notched that into our locating hole. You can see how easily that all goes together. Over to the other side. Again, in there, in the locating hole. Now, what I've done, um, what I've done here is, I've put a couple of blocks screwed to the edge of the bench. Now, this is just going to speed up me making sure all these panels are, are square. So that just pushes in there. Then I'm going to drop down the bottom, and we'll um, and we'll put that bottom rail in. Um, so I'll I'll do that in a tick, and then we'll come back and look at how we're going to put the. Uh, the, the, um, the, the chicken wire or the, um, the, the mesh on this, uh, this panel. Um, so I'll get that done and I'll be back shortly. All right, just quickly, um, just, just a quick way of cutting the wire here. So the, the, the wire we're using for, these, um, for this wall panel is 180 centimetres or six feet wide. Um, it's got a four centimetre um, aperture and you can see it's a hexagonal shape and 1.4 millimetre diameter wire. Um, you need a reasonably heavy wire on the side um, but just to make it fox proof. Um, the other thing about using this size um, aperture as opposed to a five centimetre or two, um, two inch aperture is that this will let the small birds through but won't let the big birds through that are going to um, that gonna eat your crops. So those uh, little birds like little finches and things like that that will get in and eat bugs and things they can still get through but the bigger birds around here we get a lot of bower birds birds like that can't get through this size aperture. So uh, the two reasons I use this for the side, one is it's a bit more sturdy, a bit more fox proof, and secondly it still lets, lets the little birds through. So what I've done, I've put a, a line there on the slab that's 2.3, um, or just, just over 2.3 metres from this, uh, this mark I've got here. Um, I'm then going to roll that out and I'll just um, run along here and cut that wire off. And, um, and then we'll take it 
over to the bench and pop it on the panel. So um, I'll snip this off and uh, we'll go have a look at fixing it. All right, it's, um, it's time to fix the netting now on this, uh, on this wall panel. Um, so what I'm using, uh, rather than using new nails, uh, I've, I've found with time they start to come out. So um, recently for fixing, um, for fixing netting, I've been using what they call a button head screw. So this has quite a large flat head on the screw. Um, the beauty of that is because they screw in, they don't wriggle out like the, um, like the, the U nails or the, or the staples um, can. Um, now, to, uh, to fix this netting off, and, and uh, just before we go there, firstly, the only reason I'm fixing the netting to this panel on the bench at the moment is because the site that we're using is level. If there was fall in your site, you need to, once these frames are screwed together, assemble everything and then put your netting on in place because if you, if you can imagine if there's fall in the site rather than, a, than the two legs sitting level like that you've got to drop one like this which means if you screw your netting on square then you can't adjust that get that twist in the legs so we're only doing this here because the site we've got's flat so that's a decision you'll, you'll have to make when you when you set out the site so just coming back to fixing the netting so what I've done I've, I've just half screwed a screw in um, I've made a little packer here that um, sets me 50 millimetres or two inches down, so that centres this, um, this uh, mesh on the, on the top rail. So what I've done is I've put one screw there in the corner. I'm going to then come over to the other, to the other side here, uh, put that marker on there and just um, put a little mark so I know roughly where that's parallel. And then I'm going to um, pull that. I'll just grab another screw. I've lost that one. I'll just um, pull that netting tight and hold it on the mark and screw that off. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's got that end and that's reasonably tight. So what we'll do is then just run along and um, and get that fairly, fairly parallel. You probably want to screw about every foot or 300 millimetres. I've taken my earplugs off because I can't hear, hear myself um, with them on. So um, with these, uh, these rattle guns are a bit noisy, so it's not a bad idea to uh, have your earplugs in. Okay, so I'm just going to run along, I'll screw that top off and then we'll have a look how we, uh, we get the bottom tight. Okay, so now we've, um, we've got that top screwed off nice and neat. Um, I should just say, if you are putting this, um, this netting on, um, on site, what you can do is you can put a row of screws along there with your little, um, little packing block, wherever mine's gone, there it is. Um, you, can put your, uh, you can put your row of screws along there and then you can actually hang your netting up. So if you're doing it by yourself, that's not a bad way of doing it. Put a, three or four screws along there, hook your netting up on it, get it kind of looking reasonably good and then screw it off. So we've screwed off the top. What I normally do then is just come down to a bottom corner opposite, try and get a bit of tension on and then tack a screw in that corner. Um, normally then I'd, um, I'd go over to the, uh, to the opposite corner and get a bit of tension in the, um, in the other direction. Remember to leave yourself enough room so you can trim that wire off if you have to. Whoops, lost that screw. Screw that off, and then you can work your way along the bottom, just making sure that's reasonably tight. I 
Okay. Um, one thing you'll find, uh, uh, probably the only disadvantage of this heavy, heavy wire is obviously, like I said, better for foxes. Um, but it is a little bit harder to stretch and get nice and tight. But you can see that that isn't coming up too badly there now. So then I'd probably go centre of, uh, centre of this side. And just keep working your way around, just, just tightening that up. Now you can see um, I've got this um, frame squared up on the bench. I've got a couple of blocks, I think I mentioned that before there, just holding this all square and I'm clamped off so that way I can pull and push this and I'm not going to end up with this panel out of square because obviously if the panel ends up out of square then when you go and put it in all level your garden's going to be out of level. So um, really all we need to do now is just screw the rest of that mesh off so I'm going to do that. Then we're going to flip this um, over and I'll just show you then what we're going to do along the bottom. We're going to put some scrap corrugated iron um, along here but on the on the inside. So the, the netting's on the outside of the frame, the corrugated iron's going to go on the inside of the frame. So we'll flip that over and do that in a tick. Um, so I'll screw this off and I'll, um, I'll come back to you in a minute. Alright, so um, the last thing we've got to do to this frame is um, put some uh, scrap corrugated iron along, uh, along the bottom. Um, the reason we're doing this uh, firstly is to just contain a bit of the, um, bit of the soil uh, in each um, bay of the, uh, of the vegetable garden. Um, but secondly, to stop um, rabbits, foxes from uh, burrowing underneath. So this is going to go probably about that deep into the ground, about a bit over a foot or um, 300 mil. Um, look, if you've got really persistent foxes, that may not be enough. You might also have to uh, lay some chicken wire on the, on the surface of the ground. Or another way you could get around that is when you dig the trench, um, you, could, you could put a bit of broken glass in there because that always uh, slows the foxes up. Uh, apparently, the, um, if they cut their feet, they don't like the smell of their own blood, so they, uh, they, they exit, exit quickly. Um, so just to quickly run through this, so we've cut some strips, these are uh, 500 millimetres wide. Um, I'm going to use my same little uh, 50, um, 50 mil jig to, um, to position these. Now I've laid them out roughly just to see how we're going to work across there. Um, I'm going to put that little block there, lay that, lay that on. Um, and then I'm using just one of these little short roofing screws to fasten this material on. So again, that goes like that. Another one. Um, goes like that. And then we work our way across. So, um, so I'll just screw them on, and then we'll have a look at the the finish panel. Okay, so um, so we've screwed everything off there. Um, I'm just having a look. There's a little bit of um, play in these sheets here. Now we could put a pop rivet or something in there, but a, a simple way to um, to connect those sheets. If we grab the grab the tin snips and cut up in there like that, and then another bit next to it. Then we can grab the pliers and bend that, bend that over like that, and that will um, that will lock that together. Now, um, if you want to, you can just run along the top there with a file and make sure nothing's too sharp. But at the end of the day, I think that should be all right. I mean, this isn't the um, prettiest looking corrugated iron you've ever seen, but. Um, you know, normally the chooks aren't too fussy, so um, 
it shouldn't matter too much and they'll be um, they'll be very glad that you keep the foxes out because uh, foxes and chooks uh, they just don't mix. Um, so I'm, I'll just lock this together and then really that's this panel complete so I'll quickly run through just putting the, the door panel together I'm not going to go through all the mesh and everything on it um, and then really then we're going to come back um, next week and uh, and, and have a go at this with a, with a group of people and see how many of these panels we can, uh, we can get knocked up. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll finish this one off, um, we'll come back and have a look at the door panel and, um, and then, uh, then that, that we might call it a night, it's starting to get pretty late. Alright, so we've um, looked to, to not bore you senseless, so I've basically I've run around and I've screwed everything together, so exactly the same principle as before. Um, you can see here, obviously this opening in the centre um, is for the door um, and we'll talk about making doors later. Um, so that panel's all screwed together. Now to just hold it in the right position, um, what I would do is measure from the inside of that post to here, which should be 2200 millimetres, which is exactly what it is, um, and then to keep it all stable we'll then just screw a, um, screw a brace across the door opening obviously this is just temporary um, keep it down low enough so it's not going to get in the road of your wire so that can go in there and one more one more there, so that, that holds that all together next process would be cut a piece of wire for that section same principle, screws, put it on piece of wire for that section um, flip it over piece of corrugated iron in this section piece of corrugated iron in this section and that will be the door panel complete. Um, if you just want to have a look over here I've, um, I've stood up the, the panel we made before so you can see that's um, you know it's a pretty good looking product um, so yeah here we've got the you can see the corrugated iron this will be buried about that deep in the ground and um, you can see with the wire on Obviously the, the beauty of this system is it's, um, it's, it's, it's easy to make, much more simpler than the, other, than the um, other structures and if you are working with a flat site and you can put your wire on off site, put your, your corrugated iron on the bottom where literally when it comes time to assemble this on site all we need to do is put the sides up, brace them together and put the top wire on and that's it finished. So um, yeah, so you know if, if you can uh, can do all this pre-assembly work, it's, it's fantastic. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, as I mentioned before, we're going to come back next week. Um, I'll try and get probably between eight and ten people, I think, and we'll, um, we'll set up some workstations. Uh, I, can, I can see after um, doing what we've done tonight that the, um, probably the, the, the two main processes that are going to take the time is preparing the timber. So that's denailing, cutting to length, drilling the holes. So we'll get a, um, a workstation doing that, and then we'll have another station out here assembling the panels on the on the bench. So um, we're going to come back next week with a few other people. Um, that should be a, a good bit of fun. So um, yeah, hopefully you can come back and uh, and see where we get next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>